If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you also click on the little bell to ensure that you receive all notifications for all new videos being uploaded. Make sure you hit the like button, share with your friends, and comment below. I'm Shannon, and Come Again starts now. Hey guys, welcome back to Come Again. I'm Shannon, and uh, today I wanted to go over some reading recommendations. And what I've got here is Master the, Masters of the Universe, Volume 1 by Image Comics and MV Creations. Now, as you can see, it's a fairly big stack, but there's only four issues in this volume. <clears throat> and the reason why this is so big is because I have alternate covers to three of the four issues uh, as you can see issue one has Skeletor on one cover and the Masters of the Universe on the other cover this is cover C and I believe this is cover A it doesn't have a, a cover logo on there but here this one says cover C um, and as you can see, this one's got more of a golden foil look on the uh, logo itself. And this basically takes place in the 2000X He-Man universe. So <clears throat> what we have here are issue number two. I've got cover A and cover B. This is A, this is B. And then issue number three covers A and B. And then issue number four, I've only got the one cover for it. Now, Image did a really great job with translating the 2000X He-Man into comic book format. Issue number one has five different alternate covers, uh, ranging from a to e. Uh, mycomicshop.com has it listed as about two dollars and forty cents on their uh, online marketplace. All right, so in this series, Orko comes across a powerful crystal that enhances his powers, but it also uh, changes his personality quite a bit and makes him a little bit more entitled. You know, he it brings out his worst qualities. And at the same time, Skeletor is hatching a plan to obtain the secrets of Castle Grayskull. But Evil Lynn is working behind the scenes with Trapjaw and it appears Triclops in order to gain this crystal and overthrow Skeletor and King Randor. The story itself is pretty decent. Uh, it wasn't anything that really had me on the edge of my seat. You know, most... He-Man stories, you know He-Man's going to win, other than, you know, the most recent He-Man Thundercats titles, which I won't get into right now, but um, in the 2000X version, we know He-Man's going to win no matter what. Uh, in this volume, which is volume one, it does take four issues for him to win, but he does finally win. Issue number one also contains the first four pages of Invincible volume one which came out about the same time as the 2000X He-Man series. I remember uh, reading Invincible Volume 1 as a digital comic on Image's website when it was released, and I knew right then and there that it was going to be something incredible. And it, sure enough, it, it became one of Image's top titles. But I'll give issue number one, which came out in November of 2002, a 7 out of 10. Uh, like I said, it was a good read. wasn't anything special. Um, but if you're a Masters of the Universe fan, you will enjoy it. In issue number two, which again has multiple covers, He-Man sets out on a journey to destroy the uh, mystical artifact that Orko brought them um, as he's charged with by the sorceress. You see, eventually... 
<clears throat> He-Man is accompanied by Man at Arms and a few others of the Masters uh, to the outskirts of Eternia uh, in order to get rid of this crystal. But chaos soon ensues when the Masters start turning on each other and fighting for the crystal. Uh, so He-Man decides to finish out the journey on his own uh, as he heads towards Snake Mountain. In issue number two, it's revealed that the crystal that Orko found that He-Man is trying to destroy is only a fragment of the Chakaran crystal. He-Man is sent to Snake Mountain in order to obtain the rest of the crystal in order to destroy it so that it doesn't so that the full crystal does not fall into evil hands. This fragment of the crystal in which the Masters of the Universe now possess is called the Shard of Darkness. And it's said to bring out the worst qualities of a person while also enhancing their powers. Uh, issue number two was an improvement over issue number one. Still not really anything special, but it does begin to show that, you know, no matter how good someone is, that they are still capable of evil. Such is the case with He-Man, Man-at-Arms, and Orko, who begin turning dark whenever they are, <clears throat> are, are near the Shard of Darkness. I'll rank this issue as an 8.5 out of 10 stars. Issue number 3, once again with multiple covers, is it opens with He-Man um, becoming unlikely allies with Evil Lin, who lures He-Man into a trap in order to destroy Skeletor. Uh, Evelyn poses as an ally, but in reality, we, we all see it coming. We know that she's not really trying to help He-Man. She's not really trying to, uh, join forces or anything like that. She's trying to possess the full Chakaran crystal in order to defeat Skeletor and King Randor and rule over Eternia on her own. Uh, in this issue also... <clears throat> the Shard of Darkness finally takes possession of He-Man. And we get to see his full potential as a villain. Um, he really starts to almost transform into the anti-Eternia He-Man without the full black and red hair. Um, he, I wouldn't say he's really evil, but he, he feels that he needs to rule Eternia in order to keep the people safe. And in order to do that, he needs to destroy Skeletor and Evil Lin and all the other evil horde. I mean, it, it really goes deep into He-Man's mentality. Uh, it also makes him a lot more violent, uh, willing to kill, which we haven't really seen from He-Man before. And... He's, he becomes obsessed with uh, obtaining the rest of the Chakaran Crystal. <clears throat> it's also revealed in this issue at the end that Skeletor knew all about Evil Lin's plan and that Triclops was actually working against Evil Lin and never really turned his back on Skeletor. Uh, once again, an improvement over the first two issues. Uh, I will rank this as an 8.5 out of 10 stars. Um, which is about the same as issue number two. Um, the story was good. You just, you could see the ending coming. Uh, it proves that even He-Man isn't powerful enough to escape the, the power of avarice or greed. So in issue number four, we see Skeletor and Evil Lin battling it out. We also see... Trapjaw begging for mercy, which is kind of a change from his Icons of Evil counterpart. As we saw in Icons of Evil, Trapjaw was more of a um, more wanting to take the power for himself and not wanting to follow Skeletor. Uh, but in this, he's kind of more or less like the Trapjaw from the filmation version. A uh, battle ensues as Man at Arms and the Masters of the Universe. Uh, attempt to help He-Man by attacking Snake Mountain, uh, but Skeletor's Skeletal Warriors, or whatever they're called, I can't remember exactly, um, battle back. Uh, massive battle. Uh, as you can see, Skeletor 
has He-Man in chains, stretched out. Uh, it seems that Skeletor may have finally won. But He-Man does break his chains and begins to attack Skeletor. He does take Skeletor's Havoc Staff while Skeletor has possession of the Sword of Power. So it, it's kind of a role reversal. You know, normally we see Skeletor with the Havoc Staff battling He-Man, who's in possession of the Sword of Power. Now He-Man has the Havoc Staff and Skeletor has the Sword of Power. In this scene, we see the Shocker on Crystal calling to He-Man. It's <clears throat> saying, He-Man, come to me, come to me. As he and Skeletor are racing to it. Um, till finally we see when He-Man touches the Shocker on Crystal, inside himself, Adam is split from He-Man. And the Shocker on Crystal takes possession of the He-Man personality. Right there. And it's more like, which is, which is the mightier of the two? Prince Adam or He-Man? We know He-Man possesses all the strength and power. But there's also something to be said about Prince Adam... Um, who possesses the wisdom, the courage, and the humanity, which makes He-Man possible. It also shows that even when Prince Adam can't transform into He-Man, he's still willing to do whatever it takes to ensure that evil doesn't win, and ends up defeating the uh, dark entity once and for all. By himself, um, he's barely able to raise the sword of power, uh, but he does end up using it to destroy the dark entity. And we come back to the real world where He-Man shatters the crystal once and for all, causing it to explode. And uh, he appears to be falling to his doom, but Man-at-Arms catches him and <laughs> immediately locks him up. Feeling that, you know, I'm sorry about this, He-Man, but I've got to be certain that you're not evil. <laughs> you know, so, uh, it's revealed that um, the sorceress requested Man-at-Arms and the rest of the Masters to stay behind and let He-Man do it on his own. Because it, it was He-Man's destiny to, to do this by himself. And if Man-at-Arms would have... Uh, Listen to the sorceress, several of his men wouldn't have died. Uh, he says, uh, We lost many in battle, a battle I'm sure we could have avoided. Imagine how much worse the situation would have been if He Man was lost to the power of the evil artifact. Sorceress uh, goes on to say, But He Man did not lose, and if you had done as I requested, the lives of your men would have been spared. He Man would have managed on his own. As it was foretold. Man at Arms returns with, I'm not sure free falling several hundred feet would classify as managing it. You underestimate the resourcefulness of He Man and of Adam. Uh, but we're left with one fragment of the Chakron Crystal, can be seen in the pits of Snake Mountain. Um, only time will tell if it's truly gone. Um, once again, this was issue number four, the end of volume one from Image Comics. Uh, I'll be going over volume two as soon as I get the final uh, issue of that volume. I've got, well, I'll show you real quick. I've got issues one and two so far. I think there's anywhere between three to five uh issues in this series so I'll, I'll have to double check but once i get all the issues for volume two i will review it overall i will give volume one a an eight out of ten uh, it's a good story good read if you like masters of the universe you'll want to pick this issue this volume up uh, like i said for collectors there are variant covers and uh, so yeah uh, I hope you guys enjoy and stay tuned
and of course, if you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like, comment below, and share with your friends. <laughs> I hate you.